The Battle of Bunker Hill was fought in the year 1775 and was the first major battle of the American Revolution. Following skirmishes at Concord and Lexington, the British planned to strengthen their position in Boston by fortifying the high grounds on the Charlestown Peninsula, a crucial site as it overlooked both the city of Boston and its harbour. Upon learn of these plans, the colonial forces moved quickly to fortify the hills before the British. Under the cover of darkness, colonial soldiers worked through the night constructing a redoubt on Breed's Hill where most of the action would take place. The British had to take back this ground and forces were sent from Boston to carry out the mission. On the day of the battle, the British Army, under the command of William Howe, had around 2,000 soldiers and a few cannons. They were also supported by a number of battleships that were positioned around the Charlestown Peninsula. The colonial forces, led by William Prescott, consisted of about 1,500 militiamen with some cannons. Soldiers were posted to the redoubt at Breed's Hill. And to avoid a British flanking manoeuvre, Soldiers were also positioned to defend a small stone wall close to the shoreline and a rail fence next to it. Other colonial soldiers remained on Bunker Hill as backup if any position needed to be reinforced. A few hours before the battle, a British warship began to fire at Charlestown to clear the town of snipers. But as many of the buildings were made of wood, the town soon caught fire. The battle started when soldiers on the British right began to move towards the stone wall and rail fence. The field pieces the British had bought with them were only used temporarily as they had been supplied with the wrong size ammunition. As the British got closer and were preparing for a bayonet charge, the colonial forces opened fire. Despite big losses, the British continued to advance but these were also fired upon. Despite heavy casualties, still the British put forward, but the repeated attacks eventually forced them to retreat. At the same time this was taking place, the British were also marching up Breeze Hill to attack the redoubt. When the British were within 50 yards of the redoubt, the colonial forces opened fire and inflicted large casualties, forcing the British back down the hill. William Howe regathered his forces and proposed a second attack. This time, a smaller force would attack the rail fence and a larger group would target the redoubt. The British on the right moved towards the rail fence and when they got within range, opened fire. The colonial forces responded and both sides exchanged fire. But with no cover, the British were easy targets. Large numbers of British had been killed before they finally decided to withdraw. The larger British force was again marching up Breed's Hill. The colonials followed the same tactics used earlier, waiting for the British to get within 50 yards of the redoubt before firing. This had the same effect as before, the British suffering huge losses before being forced back. With two failed attacks, Howe requested reinforcements and an extra 400 soldiers arrived. The third British attack would be mainly concentrated on the redoubt. The manoeuvre began with a much smaller force focusing on the rail fence. The colonial forces were running low on ammunition and when the British marched up the hill and attacked on all sides in numbers, they were able to overwhelm the redoubt. Some colonial soldiers were killed, but most began to flee. The defenders of the rail fence also retreated. The British continued to fire at the retreating colonial soldiers, and this is where the majority of them were killed. After three attempts, the British had finally captured the hill, and they took the Charlestown Peninsula. At the end of the battle, the colonial forces had lost about 140 soldiers, but the British had lost around 230 with many more wounded. Although the British aims were achieved, this was an expensive victory. This action boosted the morale of the colonial forces, which was vitally important as many more battles would be fought before American independence could finally be won.